generation right having said that let's move to our first board where we will be talking about that definitely we need a gateway redundancy protocol and the reason is suppose we have here these access switches right here we have access switches right here and if we talk about let's say that this is part of vlan 10 the green host the yellow host is part of vlan 20 and of course i can assign a subnet range to vlan 10 which might be 192.168.10.0/24 maybe this pc address is 10.10 .10, as simple as that if this green pc wants to communicate to red pc or yellow pc definitely we are talking about communication between vlans and if there is a communication between vlans then this pc should go to its default gateway and the default gateway is 10.1 where exactly it is i have configured the default gateway on this distribution switch maybe on svi for vlan 10 right here right and the ip address is going to be 10.1 and this SVA is going to be the default gateway for VLAN 10. And if I talk about the traffic flow, first thing first, this PC is going to do the ARP for the VLAN 10 or 10.1. It is going to get that message, the ARP reply back to understand or to know what is the MAC address associated with 10.1. Once it gets a MAC address, it is going to send its traffic like this. At this interface, the traffic is going to be route. Maybe if it is talking to VLAN 20, it is going to the yellow interface. And maybe if it is going to talk to this guy, right, right here, your traffic will come like this. We have discussed these traffic flows in the last class. You all know about it. But why I am repeating it? I am repeating it because right now I can see that this switch is actually the single point of failure. If this switch is not there, it means that I'm not going to have my VLAN 10 SVI. If I'm not going to have my VLAN 10 SVI, I'm not going to have 10.1 IP address. And 10.1 IP address is my default gateway for VLAN 10. If 10.1 is not there, VLAN 10 host or these green host cannot go anywhere. Maybe if they want to communicate inside the same vlan they can because they do not need a layer 3 interface for that but if they want to communicate towards internet or to any other vlan they do need a layer 3 interface or layer 3 device and if you do not have that it is going to be a problem right so the left hand switch this switch is going to be single point of failure for the vlan 10 or maybe VLAN 20 or VLAN 30 also. If we have SVI is configured right here, it is as simple as that. You must be thinking that, Mr. Vishnu, why don't you create another VLAN 10 SVI here? And I would say that if we do that, then basically, if I, as soon as I bring up this 10.1 IP address here, your network is going to give me the error of duplicate address detection that there is a duplicate address present. And I want you to think about it. What is going to happen if your network is having two same IP address as a gateway? Believe me, it is going to create a problem. But you are now in this situation to ponder or to think about what should be the problem. If we have two gateway with the same IP address, Right, so this is the problem. Definitely, we do need another gateway. Definitely, we need somewhere this 10.1 so that if this goes down, then anywhere else I should have this 10.1 so that my traffic should not be impacted. As simple as that, right? And that is why this is the problem actually we have been discussing. So maybe we have our mr rahul ji here and we have informed it that mr rahul this is the problem we have been talking about the problem is that if this distribution switch goes down then 
PC1 is not able to send traffic to anywhere apart from VLAN 10. What should we do? And Mr. Raul is thinking aloud here, right? Right. And suppose right now, till now, we do not have any knowledge of HSRP. We do not know. We do not know anything about HSRP. We do not know anything about first hop redundancy protocol. Right. So this is the first time somebody is thinking about the HSRP protocol. Suppose, right. So what is the need here? The need here is that suppose we have this VLAN 10. Of course, the subnet is 92.168.10.0 slash 24 because we always take this as a subnet, right? This host address is 10.10, .10, suppose. This host address is 20.10, suppose. And this belongs to VLAN 20. Maybe the IP address range is 192.168.20.0 slash 24. And we have created the default gateway for VLAN 10 right here on the distribution switch one which is 192.168.10.1 slash 24. why do we have created this here because we need a default gateway right but what is the problem now the problem is if this switch goes down then basically my pc vlan 10 won't be able to communicate to internet or vlan 20 or to any other network it is as simple as that because my gateway is down and mr rahul is thinking that what it would be really nice that if distribution one goes down if this interface goes down somewhere i should get another interface which should be up and running which is going to have the same ip address as 10.1 but this should come into picture once 10.1 goes down really really interesting so everything is happening in Mr. Rahul's mind. He is not thinking about the implementation first. He is thinking about the solution. And believe me, please try to use this approach. If you are thinking about a solution, do not think about the implementation first, right? Try to think, what are the different ways you can solve this problem? And that is exactly what Mr. Rahul is doing. Mr. Rahul is thinking, wouldn't it be nice that if I have a router here somewhere, and then here is Mr. Rahul's boss. Mr. Rahul's boss is saying, no, you cannot get another router here. Mr. Rahul is thinking, boss, I am just thinking about the problem, right? And then he is saying, this is just kind of a virtual router. And he is assigning an IP address right here. On this router, the IP address is going to be 192.168.10.1 slash 24. And you must be thinking that why Mr. Rahul is giving my default gateway address, the PC1 default gateway is 10.1. Why Mr. Rahul wants to give this address to another router? Why it should not be on distribution one? Because previously the problem was that if we have a gateway on distribution one, right? If it gets down, then my problem is start. But right now, you are giving this IP address to a totally different router, right? And Mr. Raul is thinking and thinking. He is saying, no, no, no. This is actually my virtual router. And this is my virtual IP. And then I am asking Mr. Raul, what is the meaning of virtual IP? Then he explains something more. He is saying that whoever is having the authority will be having this ip address interesting statement from mr rahul what is the meaning of authority right then rahul is explaining this whoever router is having more power or active in nature it is going to get this ip address and whoever is not that powerful it is going to be standby really really interesting right active means that switch or a router so by the way i can call this distribution one or distribution switch as a switch or as a router why because this is a layer 3 device if it is a layer 3 device it can do routing as well as switching so by the way if i tell these switches as router also it is not the mistake right so overall mr rahul is saying whoever is active it is going to take the role 
of virtual router which is having 10.1 IP address right and right now if distribution switch 1 is active then it is having 10.1 IP address then I asked him this is Rahul what if this active goes down then Rahul is saying if there is the case standby will become active right and then if standby becomes active it is going to take the role it means that it is going to take the 10.1 ip address very very interesting then i asked another question with mr rahul how come on earth distribution 2 will come to know about that active switch is down then rahul ji has answer for everything he is saying actually these two switches are talking really really interesting and believe me, if switches are talking, they are talking on some common language. And that language has some rule. And those rules are known as a protocol. So basically, Mr. Rahul is building a protocol here, right? So he is saying that both of the switches are sending messages to each other. And they are saying hello to each other. Really, really interesting. And if standby router misses three hellos or four hellos or five hellos, then it assumed that now there is no active router. Why? Because if there was an active router on the on this link, then I would have gotten many hello messages. But from the last four or five times, I have been seeing that these hellos are not there at all. Nobody is sending me hellos. And that is why I'm. So what is happening, guys? Here, if standby router is not receiving the hello messages then it is going to declare itself as the owner of 10.1 the owner of this router the owner of this virtual router it is as simple as that so basically if you are thinking about something right and if somebody is there who is questioning your thought then maybe you are thinking more clearly right you start thinking more clearly and this is what mr rahul is doing Mr. Rahul has answered for all the questions and it's a great thought. Whoever is active is going to get that end dot one. Very, very interesting. Right? Now let's see. But at the first place, which router is going to have that authority? Maybe you can write down that priority value here in this hello messages that when distribution switch one is sending the hello, it is going to send that my priority value is 100, which is a greater number or maybe 200. And if you send a value less, lesser than 200, then basically I'm the boss. I'm the active router and whoever is the active router is going to get this IP address, which is 10.1. Really, really interesting. But this is a virtual IP address. And of course, this IP address should have the MAC address also. Maybe I'm choosing a special MAC address for this. Maybe E colon E colon E. This is the MAC address associated with 10.1. Right? So what we are doing here, guys, we are just building a new protocol. We are just thinking about how router or gateway redundancy work. Right? So first thing first, I have given, I have definitely created a SVI here, but not with the default gateway address. I am creating a SVI here where I am marking just that the SVI address is 192.168.10.2 slash 24. You must be thinking why 10.2? The reason is this switch should understand that it is connected to some VLAN, right? If I say the 10.2 network is there, the switch is going to understand because it is a router to 192.168.10.0 slash 24 is directly connected to SVI for VLAN 10, right? And this is directly connected. Similarly, here also on this green interface or SVI for VLAN 10, I will be creating an IP address which is 192.168.10.3 slash 24 and here exactly this switch will be learning a route which is 192.168.10.0 slash 24 via connected on SVI for VLAN 10. 
it is as simple as that because this is just a router now but nobody is having 10.1 till now unless and uh, unless we specify active router and active router is decided on the basis of the highest priority or highest number now that is interesting right if active router always sends the hello messages the standby router will definitely receiving it and it will be convinced that active is alive if active is alive there is no issues no problems right interesting so this is what mr rahul is thinking about that this should work right maybe with the help of some engineers he has written the code and now he wants to test it so suppose what is happening here is the distribution switch one is now active and it is getting this ip address right now 192.160.10.1 so basically the virtual router is having this ip address and we are calling this ip address as virtual ip because technically right now it is on the active router but if active routers fail this router or this switch is not going to have this ip address on the contrary it will be received by the secondary or standby router or the switch so in the normal case this guy is up and running this router is the property or this virtual ip is the property of distribution one as simple as that if that is the case what is going to happen if vlan 10 wants to communicate to vlan 20 first thing first it is going to do an arp address resolution protocol for default gateway what is the default gateway default gateway is 10.1 arp message will be on this green wire then from here it is going only here and you must be wondering mr vishnu why it is not going here because because of the spanning tree protocol this link is going to be blocked because we have another link between distribution switch one and distribution switch two which is this link right let me choose some other pan so that we have distinction so r will come here and of course on this r is a broadcast it will go here but when it comes here it will be reaching to this interface right not this one it will be reaching to this virtual interface where we have configured 10.1 which is on my virtual router and the ownership of this virtual router is right now with distribution one why because it is an active switch it is having this 10.1 ip address so it is going to reply that the message or the 10.1 mac address is e dot e dot e it is as simple as that once the mac address is resolved my problem is solved i can go anywhere so this is going to be traffic flow from here to here from to the virtual router virtual router is sending okay it is want to go to the vlan 20 vlan 20 svi again coming back here and then reaching here as simple as that right no doubt about it but let's consider a failure scenario right what is going to happen in the failure scenario again let me choose the pink pen if it is a failure then suppose this link is down suppose if this link is down then of course the spanning tree protocol is making this link up and of course the switch is also down suppose if this switch goes down then of course some of the hello messages are going to be missed by distribution 2 and depending on what you have configured mr rahul is saying distribution 2 will become active after some time maybe you can say that after missing of three hello messages distribution 2 should become the active router because this router is not there at all if it becomes the active router it means that 10.1 virtual ip is now the responsibility of this guy and the mac address also e colon e colon e is the responsibility of this guy because tin colon one has corresponding mac address e colon e colon e as simple as that right now what is going to happen in terms of a traffic flow pc1 again wants to talk to pc2 what is going to do 
it is talking in some another network in different VLAN. It is going to do an R for its default gateway. R will be going here. The spanning tree has blocked it, or maybe this link is already down, right? What is going to happen? R will be going here. If that is the case, R, because now distribution switch two has this IP address, 10.1, it is going to reply that now I have E colon E colon E. If that is the case, what is going to happen this time? From VLAN 10, the switch, the PC will go like this. The sorry traffic flow will go like this. Come to this router, which is the virtual router, which is the property of distribution 2. Again, the packet is going to be routed here. Reach to VLAN 20. Again, come back and then go like this. Really, really interesting. Active becomes, active is gone now. Standby is working everything. So basically, whatever Mr. Rahul is thinking, it is right now into the action, right? He has thought some of the nitty gritties about this thing. But there is one more interesting thing which you should have asked by, by now, which you haven't, right? Because we can challenge Mr. Rahul that Mr. Rahul, your solution has this problem. If anything coming to your mind, please do ask. Otherwise, I will be definitely explaining you on the next board. So this protocol, which Mr. Rahul is thinking, is known as actually your hot standby routing protocol. 